nothing's being done. It's just not good enough. Um, Sarah was just walking home. She did everything right. The horrific crime that we've seen in the case of Sarah Everard has has triggered, has unleashed a wave of, of feeling. And this story is only growing. There are bigger protests planned in London later today. And guys, it's going global. I just wish a movement like this happened before. Sarah Everard was the youngest among the three children of Jeremy and Susan. She was adored by her family, boyfriend and friends, who described her as bright and beautiful. Raised in York, Sarah graduated with a degree in human geography from Durham in 2008. Afterward, she set her sights on London, driven by ambitions beyond her hometown. In February 2021, at the age of 33, Sarah embraced a new chapter in her life as she took on the role of senior marketing account manager at the Flipside Group in Holborn. She was excited about this next phase and saw it as a significant step in her career. Little did she know, this period would redefine her life and become a focal point for global attention. On the fateful night of March 3rd, 2021, around 7 in the evening, Sarah visited a friend on Leithwaite Road. Before going, she stopped by a convenience store to purchase a bottle of wine. Sarah left her friend's house at 9 in the evening and began to walk home. The distance from Leithwaite Road to Brixton was around 2.5 miles, which would take at least 50 minutes by foot. This was a path she had traversed countless times before. Despite the quieter streets, a consequence of the pandemic restrictions, Sarah remained vigilant, taking precautions as she navigated through the familiar route. She took the main road and opted for the well-lit section of the street. In the middle of her walk, she engaged in a call with her boyfriend for 15 minutes, telling him that she was on her way home. That was the last time anyone heard from Sarah that night. The following day, Sarah's absence from work and failure to attend a meeting raised concerns since such behavior was highly unusual for her. Her boyfriend spent the entire day trying to reach her, only to be met with unsettling silence. With growing concern, Sarah was officially reported missing, triggering a swift and thorough search and investigation. The police started by combing through CCTV footage, retracing the potential routes she might have taken that night. A CCTV camera at the corner of the street where Sarah lived revealed that she hadn't passed by on that fateful night. This meant she never made it home. The discovery intensified the search, raising widespread concern for Sarah's safety. Faced with the distressing news of her disappearance, Sarah's family traveled from York to London to join the efforts to find her. They put up posters and distributed flyers throughout the city in a desperate plea for information. With three days passing without any contact from Sarah, the urgency to find her escalated. On March 6th, the police took a crucial step by releasing footage of Sarah in the hopes of generating new leads or triggering memories from the night of March 3rd. The public was implored to come forward with any information regarding Sarah's disappearance. Authorities also called for the assistance of the people within the area to review their ring doorbells and dash cam footage for any glimpse of Sarah on that crucial night. This decision was a big help in the investigation, as footage started to come up. A recording from a passing bus captured Sarah standing on the side of the road at 9.34 p.m. In the footage, she was speaking to a man beside a Vauxhall Astra with its hazard lights on. Another dash cam recorded the same Vauxhall Astra parked at the same location at 9.38 p.m., but with both front doors flung wide open. Those were the only footage they could gather from that night. These were enough to move the investigation forward. On the night of March 9th, a breakthrough in the case sent shockwaves through the public as a suspect had been arrested. With the help of the dash cam recordings and number plate recognition, the police successfully traced the Vauxhall Astra, which belonged to a car hire firm in Dover, Kent. In a cooperative effort, the company provided the authorities with the vital details of the person who had rented the vehicle on the night Sarah went missing. The renter was Wayne Cousins, a metropolitan police officer who lived in the coastal town of Deal, Kent with his wife and two children. Faced with the possibility that Sarah might still be alive, authorities were granted permission for an urgent interview with Cousins. It was conducted without the presence of a solicitor as they raced against time in hopes that Sarah might still be rescued. The scene in Cousins' home was deceptively ordinary, with pictures of children hanging on the wall and a family cat playfully leaping onto a lamp. Officers harbored hopes of cooperation from Cousins, the man initially denied any knowledge of Sarah. However, he later admitted to abducting her. I am in financial 
um, and I've been um, lent on by, um, I don't know who they are, they were the groups of gangs, whatever. Um, it then came through that they were going to harm my family, take them away, and they would use them instead. Um, at that point I had no option to try and find somebody. I don't, um, there's just a couple of names I was told a place to, um, take her. That's it. That's Cousins it. conveyed to the police that he felt compelled to act for the sake of his family. However, as investigators delve deeper into his motive and his alleged association with a criminal gang, Cousins failed to provide concrete evidence about their existence. The lack of substantiated proof left the police skeptical of his claims. On March 10th, the police conducted thorough searches of a wooded area, employing the assistance of dog units and police helicopters. In a grim turn of events, specialist police dogs made a heartbreaking discovery, a body in a pond located near the land owned by Cousins. Despite the body being burned beyond recognition, dental records proved that this was Sarah Everard. With this, Cousins faced the grave charge of murder. As authorities prepared evidence for the man's trial, more witness accounts and CCTV footage gradually revealed the chilling details of Sarah's final moments in the aftermath of her disappearance. On February 28th, Cousins booked a white Vauxhall Astra from the car hire firm in Dover, which he collected at 4.45 in the afternoon on March 3rd. This was the car that was captured on the recordings. Just an hour before the interaction with Sarah, he bought hairbands that he would later use in his crime. At 9.28 that same night, Sarah Everard was captured alone on CCTV, turning a corner of the street and going to Pointers Road. Around four minutes later, the Vauxhall Astra driven by Cousins followed suit. These actions suggested that Cousins planned his crime that night, though Sarah wasn't specifically his target. Tragically, she just found herself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Cousins and Sarah were next seen talking on the sidewalk with the car parked beside them, where she would later get inside. Learning this event came as a shock to her boyfriend, who had described the woman as intelligent and streetwise. He doubted that she would willingly get into a car with a stranger unless coerced or manipulated. This led the police to believe that Cousins may have used his position to deceive her into getting in the car. The only reason that I can think of, in my experience as a police officer, is that he's had to get her into that car somehow. And the main way to get her into that car is to put her under arrest. And Being an ordinary citizen who had never faced an arrest, Sarah would naturally feel apprehensive when unexpectedly stopped by a police officer. Authorities believe that Cousins presented his police ID to his victim, a theory supported when one witness testified to seeing the woman getting handcuffed that night. Senior Detective Harding believed that Cousins may have exploited lockdown rules to unlawfully detain Sarah. At that time, strict stay-at-home orders were in place and indoor contact between people not living in the same household was prohibited. The prosecutor highlighted that Sarah's attendance at a friend's dinner during the 2021 lockdown peak made her more susceptible to an accusation of breaching regulations. This was likely how Cousins transferred Sarah to his car in Dover and took her to a secluded rural area where she suffered under his hands before her untimely death. To everyone's surprise, the man who just attacked and killed a woman would stop at a service station to purchase drinks after the deed, as if nothing happened. At 3.21 a.m., Cousins' car passed by a CCTV camera at Hodes Wood near Ashford, Kent, the location where Sarah's lifeless body was heartlessly discarded at the time. He revisited this location twice and always departed just before the break of dawn. In the morning, Cousins returned the hired car to Dover. On March 5th, Cousins notified his employer that he wouldn't be able to come to work due to stress. He then proceeded to buy gas and callously burned Sarah's body and belongings inside a fridge at Hodes Wood. With a flat-packed trolley, he then moved the body from the freezer to the shallow water in a woodland area near his home. To create an alibi, Cousins took his family on a trip on March 7th near the place where he burnt Sarah's body. The next day, he called in sick for work, and on March 9th, just 40 minutes before he was arrested, he wiped off his phone's data to delete any traceable evidence. All these efforts would later be in vain, as Cousin was charged two days after the police found Sarah's body. Cousins led a diverse professional life before his involvement in the tragic events. 
initially serving in the 3rd Battalion of the Army Reserves for a period of two years, starting in 2002. Kuzin's transition to civilian life before embarking on a career in law enforcement. Kuzin's law enforcement career began as a traffic officer with Kent Police in Folkestone in 2008. He subsequently joined the Civil Nuclear Constabulary, where he contributed to security efforts at the Dungeness Nuclear Power Station in Kent. In 2018, he made a transition to the Metropolitan Police, where he became part of the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. At the time of the incident, Kuzin's was 48, serving as a diplomatic protection officer within a Westminster-based unit of the Met. Tasked with protecting high-profile individuals and structures in London, his primary responsibilities involved safeguarding embassies. On July 9, 2021, Kausins pleaded guilty to the murder, kidnapping, and engaging in inappropriate conduct against Sarah. Using a video link from jail, he admitted to a psychiatrist that he had strangled Sarah with his police belt, which matched the autopsy report on Sarah's cause of death. During his time in custody, Kuzins displayed disturbing behavior by deliberately hitting his head on the toilet bowl in his cell, resulting in a cut. This unsettling incident occurred just before he was set to be interviewed. Kuzins was transported to the hospital for treatment. Upon his return to the police station, he was placed under constant supervision. On the eve of Kuzins' sentencing, Sarah's mother, Susan, expressed the profound sorrow of losing her daughter, stating that Sarah spent her last hours on Earth with the very worst of humanity. Sarah's sister, Katie, also spoke during the court hearing, directly addressing Kuzins. She conveyed a deep sense of betrayal and anguish, expressing that Kuzins treated Sarah as if she was nothing, prioritizing his perverse desires over a human life. Katie went on to condemn the disposal of her sister's body as if it were rubbish, emphasizing that Sarah meant everything to them. She went on to share the painful experience of having to go to Sarah's flat and pack up her entire life that was abruptly halted by a predator on the loose. On September 30th, 2021, Wayne Cousins faced the judge to receive his sentence. His family did not attend his hearing, both due to pandemic protocols and their continued disbelief that the father of two could have done such a crime against an innocent woman. Instead, his family watched his sentencing via a video link from an unknown location. On that day, Cousins received a life sentence without the possibility of parole for the heinous crimes against Sarah Everard. In a disturbing revelation, it came to light that Cousins had previously engaged in inappropriate behavior, repeatedly flashing staff at a fast food restaurant just days before Sarah's abduction. The manager took note of his license plates, and given that Cousins used his credit card during the purchase, his details were easily accessed. Despite the incident being reported to the police, however, no action was taken. This information fueled public outrage, with many expressing the belief that Sarah's tragic fate might have been prevented if the police had acted promptly on Cousins' previous misconduct. This case was assigned to Samantha Lee, a young police constable. During the investigation, she admitted to failing to inquire further about the CCTV footage that captured Cousins' acts that day. Still, she maintained that she did not believe she was at fault for what happened to Sarah after the incident. Despite her defense, Lee was found guilty of gross misconduct in May 2023, and as a result, has been barred from the force for life. After this came to light, more of Cousin's past were uncovered. Multiple accounts of inappropriate behavior were reported against Cousin's years before Sarah encountered him. In 2015, he was spotted driving around Dover while exposing himself. In 2011, his co-workers from the Civil Nuclear Constabulary complained about his behavior, particularly how his female colleague felt unsafe around him. More accusations were also documented as far back as 2002, leading people to question how the man managed to enter the police force given his history. This sparked investigations within the UK police culture. Eventually, an officer who shared images from the Sarah Everard case on social media was suspended, and five others were placed under scrutiny for sharing inappropriate material with Cousins before he committed the crime. Female officers also admitted to the press that they weren't confident about reporting against their male colleagues, thus potentially allowing them to get away with criminal acts. The events surrounding Sarah's tragedy ignited widespread outrage among the public, prompting deep concerns about women's safety in public spaces. People organized a vigil in memory of Sarah in Old Bailey, 
while also raising public awareness to address the broader issue of violence against women. Even Duchess of Cambridge Kate Middleton visited the vigil and laid flowers for the fallen woman. However, the police opposed the gathering, citing that it was against pandemic protocols at the time. Despite the setback, individuals were determined to hold the vigil to pay their respects. This is a necessary process for people to grieve and come together and express the anger that this keeps happening to women. It's hard to not kind of put yourself and say that could have been me and you want to be able to come and, and pay those respects. The fact that a serving police officer was responsible for her fate added a disturbing layer to the collective dismay. I naturally, as a woman, would go to a police officer and you kind of instantly feel like, you know, a sigh of relief. I've gone up to a police officer before and walked, walked home with them. So I think it's actually made me kind of second guess and actually kind of lost trust in the police, definitely. At first, the atmosphere during the vigil remained calm. However, tensions quickly flared as the police intervened to scatter the gathering. The situation escalated into confrontations, culminating in six arrests on charges of violating health protection regulations. Among those detained was Patsy Stevenson, a woman whose arrest gained notoriety after a photo of her being restrained by the police circulated widely. This image ignited a wave of anger and suspicion, particularly among women who found themselves questioning the authorities' actions during the peaceful vigil. In the aftermath, Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cressida Dick faced criticism for how the situation was handled. The incident involving Patsy Stevenson not only intensified public scrutiny, but also raised broader concerns about the appropriate use of police force. Over two years later, in September 2023, the police formally apologized and provided compensation for the damages done to two women arrested during the vigil for Sarah, including Stevenson. The Metropolitan Police also acknowledged the legitimacy of the women's intention to join the candlelit vigil. They expressed their disappointment in how women have been let down by the authorities themselves, the women saw the apology and compensation as hard-earned victories. Despite this, their commitment to speaking out against taking advantage of the police force remained steadfast. They vowed to persist in their advocacy, continuing to raise awareness about the mistreatment they faced and improving policing methods to address this. Ultimately, Sarah's case not only held the police accountable, but also fueled ongoing discussions about the need for enhanced protection and justice for women in society. One year after her murder, Sarah's family paid a heartfelt tribute, expressing that they missed her constantly and acknowledging that their lives had been irrevocably altered. In the face of this enduring loss, they conveyed gratitude for the unwavering support and kindness received from family, loved ones, and the broader public. Sarah Everard's story has struck a chord with so many thousands of women and men too. On social media and beyond, they're telling their stories of male aggression and assault. They're voicing their fears, their fury that our society doesn't protect women. They're demanding change, an end to the violence. Campaigners hope the legacy of her murder will be a safer society, where Sarah Everard will be remembered not as a victim, but as a symbol of change. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.